My name is Beth Bernstein, and I recently wrote the book, A Modern Guide to Antique Jewelry. And it ranges in time period from the 1700s to the 1920s, a little bit beyond. And I interviewed certain dealers uh, throughout Europe and the US for the book um, to get their expert opinions. And Sandra Cronin, who is here with me today, is one of those dealers and store owners. She's been in business for 45 years, ever since she was 21. And we'd love to welcome uh, Sandra because she really knows so much and has a wide range of knowledge from every time period. And today we'll be talking with her about essential jewels, the essential jewels that you want to own and that you can wear with modern clothes. So I'm going to let her just take it away. <laughs> and if I have any questions, I'll ask afterwards while she's talking and showing us her beautiful jewels. Thank you, Sandra. And just why don't you begin? Thank you, Beth. Well, I'm delighted to be here and to help in any way I can with your wonderful publication. Um, I've brought with me um, a number of pieces. This is something in particular, um, forget-me-not. It's a locket with enameled forget-me-nots. Very appropriate, um, you know, a very sentimental gift. Uh, Victorian, probably 1880, 1885, French actually, but wonderful quality and lovely enamel. Um, something that is very sentimental and meaningful. Um, so can then, you just go back to yes, absolutely. one second? Um, so forget me now, it's actually were given in two different ways. And that one looks, uh, it was in Victorian times because you couldn't really speak your feelings. People, you know, who were yeah. either enamored by somebody that, or in, in betrothed to somebody or, you know, wanted to show their feelings, they <laughs> gave Julia as gifts. And forget me now, it's where, so they would think of, the person who is giving the gift, but forget, exactly. but forget me not, and that's a beautiful version of that type of uh, gift, uh, especially in a locket because that's also sentimental. Yeah. And then yeah. there were forget me nots for remembering people that had passed on, but that's a yeah. different type of jewelry, which is more uh, mourning jewelry. Am I right in saying yeah. this? No, no, you're totally right, and this would very much be a love token. And again, you have the whole language of flowers. There's a Victorian Edwardian book on the language of flowers, and it actually has the meaning of every single flower you can possibly imagine. So um, again, that carried right on, and the Victorians used that, and someone in the probably turn of the century did an entire book on it. Um, but it's very interesting, I'm sure things like that must also be online to see what flower yeah, what have, flower is appropriate. Yeah. I actually have a copy of it. <laughs> I have a Good. copy of every book um, yeah. in the different time periods. But yeah, it's a wonderful book to have um, because it really like lets you know. I've done articles on the language of flowers and I'm a flower person. Um, uh, I love uh, the meaning of flowers and I love anything sentimental. So go on. All right, well, actually, slight interjection, but um, this is something that we've just recently bought with the language of flowers of, with violets. And again, very sentimental, but just beautiful to have done with the Limoges enamel. All right. And I on. what violets mean. Violets mean faithfulness. And yeah. Yes. So. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Right. Well, well, section, uh, there's a section in the book on the language of flowers. So, you know, in the, oh, modern, wonderful. Guide, yeah. in the modern guide, there's a section on the language of flowers. I couldn't leave that out. So No, no, of course, I'm certainly going to look at it as soon as I get my copy. Um, another piece, which to me is an essential jewel to wear or to have, is a wonderful brooch. Brooches are so easy to wear. People just seem to have forgotten how to do it. I mean, I'm always wearing something on my shoulder. This is, um, I think, a replication, an interpretation of the 
window, the stained glass window in Notre Dame, in the very front facade of the church. In the, there's only one big window, and this is a rep, this is a an interpretation of that. Now, the window is stained glass, but this brooch has been done with all different colored gemstones and very very clever. Um, Again, often you had enamel, because you're enamel, but here they've used stones to give the same impression, but actually probably even more difficult to have matched them up so well and given the color. So I think it's worth comparing it to Notre Dame, but it's that's something. Very beautiful. Can we also yeah. see the back where you see like, uh, yeah, the light. Completely, yes, it's completely transparent. I'm not sure whether you can see that, but you can yeah. probably, the glint of the stones from the back. I, that's so. quite a lovely uh, piece. It's a, a brooch and, and you can wear it with everything. I mean, everything. I mean, perfect on, on any color. So, and, and contemporary, you can wear that and nobody would be able to sort of pinpoint that unless they were an expert as to when that actually was made. But it just yeah. shows skill. When actually was it made? Uh, did we talk about the time? Probably, period? yeah, it, well, I think 1890, 1900, probably slightly 1890, um, And I think that's when I would date it. And I also feel this is an, an American made piece. Um, very likely someone like um, Marcus, who did wonderful things with stones, or Tiffany. I mean, it could be either one. It's not signed. But I know by certain things about the way the catch is made, that it's just the type of catch that was used um, in America by, by um, Tiffany, by um, all the good companies. But um, wonderful yeah. quality, Mar Marcus in particular, probably. <clears throat> okay, another piece, which is a favorite of mine, is having a nice little pendant to wear at any time is something that I think is essential. This one is a little bee. And again, the body of the bee is a colored diamond, uh, a lovely old cut diamond. This dates 1870 and probably French. And no one would know you were wearing a rather large diamond. That's probably slightly shy of nine carats. I've never, I've never taken it out, nor would I to weigh it, because it wouldn't make any difference. It's just a wonderful piece with emerald, um, just emerald antennae and, uh, and diamond edges to the wings, but beautifully done. Yeah, and one details are beautiful yeah. around the diamond. It's just be yeah. it's a wonderful piece, yeah. And so naturalistically, uh, realistically modeled. And that has a brooch pin as well. So I have to say I wear it either way, um, but it's just something I can put on. It's easy to wear, it goes with anything. And it's not flashy, it goes with anything you wear, contemporary clothes, the most modern of, of suits or dresses, anything. So again, I can wear it as a brooch um, or as a pendant. It's so that's one of, one of my favorite pieces. And I love that the fact that you, they, um, in, you know, in those days, they were able to, you know, do these transformable pieces where you yes. could wear it as a brooch or you could wear it as a pendant. Yeah. It's like really lovely. Absolutely. I mean, the quality of the way things were made. I mean, if you think of tiaras, they came, good tiaras came apart into brooches, a number of brooches, earrings, and you would have, you know, a whole array of things or a tiara. So, and let's see, this is something of mine again, this is by Cartier, and it's a rather wonderful uh, sapphire and diamond, uh, is that about right? Yeah. A, a jabot pin, and it has wonderful sugar loaf cabochon sapphires, which are though, as you know, Beth, the very high domed one. They're also almost like a pyramid that's rounded at the top, that I have to say, um, and that's something that again, you can put on a sweater 
and it just it's very chic but not flashy you can even wear it on a hat I've worn you know when one goes to Ascot mm. you often have to wear a hat and then it's fabulous to put a, a brooch pinned on the side of the hat no, so that, that that is fabulous um yeah and you could, could you could wear it on a scarf as well right you could wear absolutely very chic on a scarf oh very yes i might do that this evening <laughs> I'm, i will i'm out um this is another jabot pin a rather interesting example i mean it just shows the work that um that was taken the care to attention and detail this jabot pin um is probably 1860 and with fabulous real pearls and turquoise but you can see as i turn it it's all the way around 360 degrees and they've done it so beautifully and that that one can't come off and be worn as a pendant but i think we might just make it so it's detachable that one could then it really can because of that when you wear it just it turns and it's wonderful from any direction and again lovely persian turquoise which is still on the, it's not discolored in any spot so people have been very careful not to put perfume because that ruins it uh, perfume is a nightmare for now this is beth this is my favorite um, of my jewels and it is essential to me um, again edwardian rather large um, sumptuous beautiful luster real pearls uh, with dime, pave diamond balls. Now this is French, it's French marked. And this is something that, you know, is rather valuable, but nobody would know. And it's very precious to me. I've had that for a number of years, but just the way they've taken the platinum and made a ball where every tiny millimeter is set with with diamonds with little old cut diamonds that's and then again, they were old yeah. Diamonds, yeah yeah and then the pearls are beautiful quite large so but that's natural pearls from that yes period, yeah absolutely exactly so that's something that is essential a wonderful bracelet a wonderful brooch um great earrings um and a wonderful pin i mean i think i mean this is a pair of lovely earrings which again edwardian with real pearls and diamonds but just super quality those again i think pearl and diamond earrings are essential um and because it's just timeless the pearls they're like amazing and yeah. are those um are they mine cut diamonds? I can't really. Can yeah. you raise them yeah. up a little bit? Dang. They are. Yes, they're mine cut diamonds um, and platinum with wonderful backs. They have a back on them, which actually holds the, the earring close to the ear, which is something which I've made for people in the past. But if I take the, the little butterfly off, they have a little platinum plate. Yeah which goes on before the butterfly and it holds it completely perfectly in place and even engraved on both sides i mean the, the attention to detail was extraordinary even though nobody would ever see it they still made sure that every single millimeter was finished those are quite beautiful and um so wearable today you can wear yes. a, a t-shirt and jeans i mean exactly yes um totally totally now again sometimes this is a pendant with a natural conch pearl stop it swinging um very it's much swinging because that's how you know it moves on, yeah. on the body yeah as long as it's in focus but I mean, that, that's a wonderful example of a fine conch pearl with a great luster and a deep color. Um, and they've taken this and made a wonderful pendant out of it with a tiny little emerald. Um, is it hexagonal? I think it's, yes, six, either six-sided or eight-sided, but just detail that really 
you know, you it was for the wearer. And I think it just shows fine quality things just always read well. And this is Edwardian? Uh, uh, yes, absolutely. For all platinum with a gold, uh, a gold collar yeah. around the emerald, as they liked to do. They often used yellow gold with colored stones and platinum with diamonds. Yes, until they started using all platinum in the Art Deco. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And uh, don't you have a signature that I always see you wearing that are one of my favorite rings? Because you can wear them all the time and nothing ever happens oh, to them. Absolutely, you totally right. My gypsy rings. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I'm thinking, those are such great wear every day rings that aren't going to get, like, you know, beautiful those they're absolutely stunning and you can wear them more than you can wear like a georgian ring or yes you know, the, the clothes they're bathroom. very quite they're very robust um you can do anything in them and they go with everything again and nobody would know these they're timeless nobody would look at them and be able to sort of say they're old they're modern they're antique but they are much finer stones in the old ones and they're much more interesting, all handmade. So I think when you really compare something modern to something antique, you can see the quality and the craftsmanship. Yes, and those are all beautiful because you have the emerald one, the all diamond ones, the ruby one, and uh, is that uh, lapis or is it? Lapis, yeah, lapis, lapis. Yeah. So I often use the two diamond ones and put whichever one I happen to sort of feel should be appropriate for the moment. So I mean, but the two diamond ones just make wonderful guards on either side of either side of the lapis one or any of them. Yeah. So they're most, very elegant. And most of them either have cushion cuts, old mine cuts, or your old yeah. European cuts in the diamonds. Absolutely. And rubies. Yeah. 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 And a bit like my my rather large one on my small finger, which um, yeah. has the. Yeah, love it. Uh, after seeing you, you know, uh, uh, in the different shows and seeing you in London, I, I always see you wearing that ring. So I'm like, there's a signal. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, I think I'm known for that. Um, but you're quite right. And again, this is something that goes with the gypsy rings, which is uh, 19th century. It's probably because the collets around the diamonds are platinum. So you're literally just 1895 the very very early use of platinum and going into 1900 but old mine cut diamonds and beautiful. lovely cabochon rubies but it goes so beautifully with the gypsy rings yes it does and all of these things work with anything that you wear today work with like the jacket that I'm wearing today or the sweater that you're wearing I mean it just all works so well um, with the pieces uh, in modern times it does I couldn't agree more I mean an elegant blazer or jacket just looks so fabulous the moment you pin a brooch on it I mean I'm wearing my arts and crafts brooch which again is um fabulous I don't I mean I haven't been able to I think it's American but I mean no I think it's English it's just something that's so interesting it's it's a scene it's a sort of a hillside scene and a tree but all done with beautiful semi-precious and precious stones so they didn't really it was an artistic interpretation Instead of a painting, this was a painting in gemstones, but it really does convey the feeling of, of what essentially would have been either a painting or something done by a jeweler, craftsman, but an artist in both cases. So, and that's, uh, that's another beautiful piece as well. What, um, what I think is really important is that most of your jewels are museum quality jewels. You have jewels dating back to the um, Georgian era. You have one yes. of, I, I'm a Giardinetti 
fan, which means yeah. flower pot. And you have yeah. like, the Jordanetti rings that was actually featured in uh, a, a book um, prior yes. to. This. So why don't we show that? It might not. It might oh. not be one you can wear every day, but it's one that <laughs> <laughs> it's one that won my heart. So yeah. thank you. No, it's wonderful. And again, to have the original shagreen shark skin box from the 18th century um, is quite extraordinary. But you can see how they've made it to the shape of a ring. It's so, so it's, uh, the box, then, I just take the box. <laughs> yeah, the box. I agree with you. But, uh, and there it is, um, sitting nestled very comfortably it's with a rose a diamond, a ruby, and a coronet above, and intertwined with little tiny leaves in emeralds and diamonds. And it has beautiful, the beautiful, beautiful, yeah, and even the back is beautifully done with the lovely caps, the ridged yeah. cap. It's, yeah, it's one of, it's beautiful. And that's why I think uh, it was featured in the ring book um, that also yes. is sitting on my bookshelf. Yes, exactly. So, Dinah Harrisburg's book. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yes, no, it's a beautiful example of a Giardinetti ring. Speaking of Giardinetti's, um, just yeah. to show you the book. Um, so, oh, wonderful. Yeah, so oh, my goodness. Your brooch is on the cover. 